Hey guys, today we're talking about uh, both a bit of Kushtira and Pearly. And honestly, Labyrinth is pretty annoying too, but it's like... Mm. So mostly, the thing with Kushtira is people want like cards hit for Kushtira, but honestly, Kushtira's like in a pretty decent spot right now. Not too much of a big deal. Like, the entire board is wiped out by like so many cards, like... Numerous cards, like step one, Kaiju, step two, uh, Raigeki, step two, Darkhole, and then, well, not step two, but it's, it, it's like, you know, Darkhole, Raigeki, evenly matched, completely unresponsible, they don't make any negates, the most someone might do is, like, they, ha they, they might have this, uh, a pointer of the Red Lotus, and then, you know, th this works with Arise Art pretty well, so, like, I will a pointer your card, and then I will attach probably Red Lotus, and then, uh, the card I banished off of Red Lotus, actually, wait, Red Lotus doesn't send itself immediately, does it? Yeah, so I guess you only attach one card, so it's whatever gets banished, and then this is effectively a hand loop, I guess. That that's about all Kushtira really does right now to deal with like problem cards but if you have like multiple it's like all right i have evenly matched raigeki and then i have interrupted kaiju slumber what would you like to take you know like cool and then it becomes like a, a top deck kind of game like worst case scenario from there maybe assuming they like maybe standby phase a pointer you sure might happen Speaking of which, like, d honestly, th this just works, like, you can just, like, hold your Imperm, like, the whole turn, and just, like, Imperm Arise Heart, I if you so wish, but you can also just Imperm Unicorn, and that can do it. It's just, like, holding it plays around if they already opened, like, uh, Birth or, um, Theosis, whichever. So, still fine, in general. Not, not really a big deal. The only thing they get to keep after a Raigeki is Shangri-Ira, which has n no effect by itself. It's a useless card. Yeah. So, Hurley, on the other hand. None of these cards, like, not all of these cards are necessarily, like, one card combos, but... Because you need a card on the field for happy memory. And then you need a monster on the field for a delicious memory, but... Usually not a problem, so I'll just assemble a quick early list for you guys. It's just three of these, three of these, three of these, three of these, uh, three of these, and then you can like run two or three of these. Two, three, whatever, like one, two, it doesn't really matter. One, two of these, one, two of these, two of these, two of these, two of these, and then, uh, aren't we missing early? What? Uh -huh. Am I missing something? Oh no, wait, there it is. Expertly happiness, whatever. I, I was just going insane. So we have three of these, three of these guys, three of these guys. And, like, pretty much none of these cards will be Garnets because they, they all have, like, essentially graveyard effects. So they, they don't, like, literally have graveyard effects, like Delicious Memory, but if Delicious Memory is in the graveyard, you can just... Um, use it to XYZ with your Pro Lily. Or if you actually just want the delicious memory effect, you can just use Plump to attach whatever card to get whatever effect you want from the graveyard. So, pretty whatever. So, th this is like the engine, right? And even if we do like this, look how much room I still have. I still have 13 cards for non engine, just straight up. So, let's just keep it simple and throw in, like, Downard and some Lynx, and then that, that'll be good enough, right? Downard Zeus, Lynx, uh, I don't know. I'll just throw in Apollosa for fun, and then, I don't know, like, Donner, Azalea, whatever. I, I guess more people run Azalea. So, we'll just throw in Azalea, I guess. And then, I don't know. Uh, Unicorn, I guess? Sure. That's fine. Doesn't super matter. Maybe I can throw in some Link ones as well, but I don't care enough to do that. Not important. So this is just to help visually, I guess. So Ash Blossom, called by for sure, and then we'll go... 
uh, grab our copies of uh, Imperm. And look, we still have room. Isn't that crazy? So you know what's crazy is even if you, for example, were to um, hit two copies of my friend, right? So we just, let, let's say we uh, limit my friend. So that that's cool and all, but now they just have two more main deck slots to run more non-engine. This doesn't actually hurt enough, honestly. It, this only potentially hurts Pearly's excavation effect a little bit. That, that's about all it does. So... Well, just because people are running, I guess I'll put Maxi in this list. Still don't have any copies myself, but whatever. And still more room for hand traps. So, effect failure. Why not? Let's do two of these, I guess. And then Droll. Droll also helps deal with um, Maxi a little bit, so uh, overall not bad. Or we can just throw in Gamma and or Nibiru. Still have room for that. And in fact, if we remove some copies of Stray Burly Street, yeah, we, we do have more copies now. Mm. So, look at this hand. So we have this, choose one card on the field, protect, next battle or effect in which you take this turn will become zero, so, yeah. Normal summon per Lily, per Lily effect adds my friend, my friend effect will add uh, a copy of Delicious Memory. And then we don't even need to activate Delicious Memory. But we'll we'll do Happy Memory now to protect my friend because it's annoying. Now it's harder to out this. So if you remove the Pearly card now, like X Pearly Noir, which I will probably make, then I will add back all of my Pearly cards, all of my Quick Plays. But anyways... We do that, and we'll discard um, Delicious Memory, I guess, because not super important. And in fact, I think people run like two Fenrir. I think that's what they would run instead of like either Droll or Effect Bailer. Anyways, Excavate 3. Oh, we can add any of these three. Uh, I'll go, I would go with uh, Stray here, and that's fine. And then we have like just a Cult Buy. If we didn't use it, it's fine, whatever, we'll just... Uh, discard called by and, and that's fine we already have a copy of delicious in the graveyard so then sleepy memory effect will special summon another copy of pearly and here we can there's like different tech you can do but whatever so uh either way excavate three okay cool We'll add another copy of Delicious Memory, I guess, for the next turn. That'll be fine. And then there's actually a play here that you can make, because here I would have two copies of Pearly, so there's actually a rank 1 play you can do with Pearly, so... We can make Ghost Rick Alucard. Alucard grabs Shot, so it's just one extra deck slot for that Shot, and then like three, four, five extra deck slots for this Monster Negate. But uh, whatever, it allows you to extend much further on your first turns. So, we go through all that, we add back Shot, and we have Utopic, F-Zero, whatever. F-Zero, Utopic, whatever it's called. So, you have that now, and to extend further now, we can actually now go ahead and do Delicious Memory again. And of course... When I, well, I already summoned our copy of, uh, Plump with my, uh, Pearl Lily, obviously, right? Forgot to mention that, but I would attach the copy of, um, Pearly Delicious Memory we activate here. So, cool. And we probably attach, mem uh, Happy Memory as well. Do we? No. Actually, we attached Sleepy Memory off of that. And then we discard the shot right so in our graveyard we should have enough cards right so we can just attach shot to our lump as one of the cards and we should have one more in the graveyard as well like i guess we could do called by as well and we are definitely at five in fact we'll be over five because of uh, our copy of the field spell okay and then of course we excavate three and we get happy memory so we can just 
activate happy memory without discarding as well, just to attach it if we wish. And that is fine as well. And we can just do that. So, how can we hit the dumbass consistency on this deck? Like, look at these hands. So this hand... Honestly, if we have one copy of my friend, this hurts a lot more. But not not that much, you still have my friend. Hmm. So this is actually the rare, probably, like, potential brick. But I actually have called by the grave. And also Ash Blossom Joe Spring. And also Drone Lockbird. Yeah. Pretty rough. Okay, so here we have this. Each player gains a thousand light points. Choose one monster on the field. Okay, so we just activate this, discard this, and then we have our combo. And with this hand, I'm pretty sure we're guaranteed, even if we don't hit anything, but we do. Sleepy memory. Pretty likely. So let's do like this. Until we don't hit a single pearly... Uh, well, a single pearly spell trap. So it took how many excavations, like assuming I actually did these as excavations, it's like 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So that's like 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is like 5th. So like 1 out of 5. Like, but you will probably pearly multiple times on the same turn, so it's like, meh. Still super high consistency, and if we got hand trapped, I, we can still like normal summon effect bailer, and effect bailer of course is a level 1, so we can still use this to do the Alucard play. All we need is two level 1 monsters to do that play. So then here, we can easily normal summon this, activate this, we can also activate this as well. Of course we would discard probably pearly, so having the this pearly in hand actually sucks a little bit, but... It's pretty manageable, honestly, and we will just use Pearl Lily effect to grab Stray Street. And yeah. Missing excavations. Surely that will happen. Here, this one. This is the only one that would have missed. I've done three. And uh, keep in mind, all of the cards go to the bottom of the deck, so yeah. Th does it happen? So this is going to work here. Yeah. So this, yeah, another hand of all time, so this will end on Noir again, and again, and again. And th this is a pretty monotonous, somewhat annoying deck. And of course the going second play on this is, like, just overall pretty strong. So, you have... If you are able to get two pearlies onto the field, you can go, uh, like, so let's remove one of these, I guess. Through this one. You can easily go into this, and then you have, like, a play. So you just make a simple Nightingale, attack twice, and then... Uh, you make Downard, and then you go Zeus, and you have a 4 material Zeus. And now you, as the opponent, have have your board wiped, and now you have to deal with a Zeus activation on your turn. And also, you, you your uh, board just got cleared, so that, that's great, I guess. And this is just uh, without any, like, hard-going second cards, which I could also run, like, Evenly matched and stuff. Triple tactics, thrust, talent. Those can be run as well. So, if we reposition the deck a bit, so we don't need effect filler that much. So, triple tactics, talent. We have this, and then thrust. Three, then two copies. Sure. And then we can go like this as well. Now this just pivoted the deck in a slightly different direction. But none of these non-engine cards ever will brick you. And they never harm you either. Because like, let, let's say even with this maxi here, or this called by, I can simply discard it. And in fact, I can even normal summon maxi here. 
so I can activate happy memory. And I'll be able to activate happy memory twice. So, that, that's a thing, I guess. And then this hand... Yeah. Let, let's see how many hands we have to look for before we get a complete brick. We have my friend, so this isn't a brick yet. And if we get ashed, we can thrust for, like, a copy of Infirm, at least. Like, worst case, right? We still have Infirm. And even then, we can still do this as well. We can... Remove one copy of Beep and put in a heinous floodgate instead, like, uh, this. De barrier. Like this. So now, let's see if we can get one of those hands. So this, uh, I can declare whatever, and then you just can't play off of the dimensional barrier. This will also negate my own copy of Noir, but whatever. Assuming, like, I just get maxied, and I just, like, get maxied in the standby, I can just activate Thrust, setting that, and then that'll be my play, for example. And that can work against some decks, but th there's other options as well. Since this specifically will set a card, it's just nice to have, like, something strong to set. I can check the best possible trap you could do, I guess. So, let's do SR Yarn. Actually, yeah, I, I figured it out. So, yeah, th this is a pretty rough one to deal with. Daruma, Destructive Daruma, Karma Cannon, adding this off of Thrust. Yeah, that's pretty hard to play around. And then next turn, I will just simply cook you with my uh, cards I still have. So, let's look for a thrust hand. Boom. Look at all this gas I have here. And then I can still do this. I get a maxi. Per turn, I guess. Turn three. Assuming you live. Because this deck is also pretty good at, uh, OTKing, surprisingly. And I mean, if you have a guy, like, in defense or attack position, I can search four times off of happiness. So, that's great. And then, expertly happiness. This can just set up game pretty easily as well. So that hurts, because they can clear your board really well using, uh, pretty, pretty memory as well. And this form of removal is pretty disgusting. You can send one other card you control to the graveyard, then target one card your opponent controls, attach it to this card as material. So this actually technically can activate, like, a disgusting amount of times. So, like, if we just focus on theoretical and not, like, like, we just pretend reality doesn't exist, I suppose. But, I mean, you can always send your copies of my friend. Street Pearly Street, your copies of Pearl Lily for this. But uh, anyways, focusing back up. You activate Pearly Pretty Memories effect here. This is soft ones per turn. So no hard ones per turn on like any of these effects. Okay. So we go Pretty Memory effect here. We'll send a card we control and then target one card our opponent controls, right? And then we'll attach it as material. And then we can do this three times. I lied. So... You probably have this on a plump, so then it will attach three of your bonus cards to your copy of plump, and then, hey, that's weird. How many uh, cards do you think are attached to plump now? Oh, that's right. Make now we can make either expertly happiness or noir, whichever one does not matter. Hey, would you look at this? This is soft ones per turn. You can use these three again. So okay, expertly noir sucks up three more of your opponent's cards is that the limit no technically you can link off expertly noir and then you can make another copy of plump if you can manage to do so you'll be able to attach two copies of pretty memory from the graveyard and then like assuming you still somehow have stuff to send you you have attached like eight cards from your opponent to your monster but only two of them are currently uh, still attached to uh, 
your copy of Plump. But actually, if you use Plump Effect as well and then rank up Plump into a copy of Happiness or Noir, this actually attaches 10. So th that's like a whole board. Dumb. Really dumb. So, for example, like Punk has a card that compulses like a billion cards, right? Like a lot of cards. But the thing about this that makes it excruciatingly annoying is that this is not hard once per turn. So you can just do it over and over again and it doesn't happen all at once. So against Floodgate decks, they're, they're fine. They're chilling against this. They can probably just stop this once and then they'll be fine because you're stunned as hell, you know? Stunned as heck. And then you're doomed. But uh, against like other decks, like just... Uh, if I negate once, assuming I can negate this, like, can you negate it? Uh, probably not, honestly. How, how would you negate this? Like, I guess you can imperm this, but they can probably change the imperm to uh, equip cards onto the plump, and then make it into Noir, and then do do this, like, two, three times. Great. And they can also search off of my friend to add this. And of course, this uh, just attaches cards generically, so not specifically monsters or spell traps, it's just either or. And this actually plays around, for example, like, uh, waking the dragon. It just does it does. Yeah. That's pain. So, I, I honestly don't see, any, like, any, like, hits that you can do to this deck without killing it. Like, if you really want to brutalize it, boom, limit pearly, or limit pearlily. And the deck is completely shafted, but now it's completely unplayable. So, like, well, what can you do to hit this? Well, you can do a little consistency hit that's just moderately annoying, like semi-limiting delicious memory, but that's just, like, annoying. Sleepy memory, you could ban this to, like, lower consistency, or, like, limit it or whatever. But it's, like, not, not that big of a deal. Like, I'll just run more non-engine instead. Like, uh... Yeah, just throw in two more copies of Nibiru, sure. Cool. What really changed? Let's do a hand again. Yeah. Normal summon this. We'll add, like, E Pearly, and then... Or not E Pearly, we'll summon Pearly. And then we'll excavate three. Cool. Off of our uh, delicious memory that we'll probably add. So, one, two, three. Wow, I actually didn't hit anything. I'm unlucky, I guess. Whatever. So, yeah, sure. We still have Stray, Pearly Stray. It's, um, the, the, this sand is like the one Pearly hand that breaks. Alright, let's try one more without this breaks. So each player gains a thousand life points. Cool. So we'll just activate this, I guess. And then we can do it on whatever. I guess on Maxi's fine. We'll discard Maxi, and then my friend activate that for Lily, right? So we'll grab Plump, Plump discards another card. We'll do Talents now. I mean, if you won't do what, if you won't like activate a monster effect by now, you'll never do it. I guess excavate three. Got the one of Sleepy Memory. Cool. So then we can. Uh, go ahead and make Plump now. Activate our copy of Sleepy Memory to discard, like, Pearly Eep if we're insane. Sick in the head, one might say. But, uh, yeah. Wait, we could just activate this by itself and then attach some cards to our Plump, and then we can just do our draws and rank up our Plump into Noir. And then we... Draw two, because we have Pearly Yeep, so one, two draws. We have Nibiru, straight Pearly Street. Still fine, honestly. Like, how many cards do we have attached? Let, let me count, so it's like... This is in the graveyard. This is in the graveyard. So we attach two, attach this, and then this attaches another card, so that's like... Uh, it also has this attached, so that's like five, six, I think, or something like that, so it's like... Uh, seven or eight material. I didn't keep complete track. 
So as long as this has five material or more, it's unaffected. But whatever, if I'm against back row, you set like five pass, I can like put back the majority of your cards anyways. And we have Ash Blossom Joe Spring. As well, do we? No, we don't. That's just the card we excavated. We have Nibiru. And I believe we don't have Maxi because discarded Maxi, whatever. So yeah, that, that that's still cards combo, whatever. Th this one's just a lot of combo. Yep. So this is in theory just what would happen if you limited my friend in sleepy memory. Does it? Uh, did it really change a whole lot? No, the deck is still as consistent as before. It just d doesn't allow you to draw as much with the uh, multiple copies of sleepy memory that you would have had before. So that's just how the deck is and I don't see any like good hits you could make without like killing the deck outright it's just not really going to happen I mean like if you want to make it less annoying to play against you could limit noir I guess and that would make it less annoying to play against so you would only have to out noir once that is the only hit I think is like super reasonable without making like pearly completely unplayable but uh yeah not a whole lot you can do about like any of this well uh yeah so that's pearly and for uh labyrinth labyrinth is just hella annoying honestly this deck just is annoying going first specifically so it doesn't have that good going second ability but it's just particularly annoying because of the, the monsters they run so specifically like stoby torby isn't that bad but honestly the card i want to see like limited big welcome limit big welcome okay thanks and then i'll get refunded on big welcome that would be appreciated big welcome should be either semi or limited straight up. This card is degenerate and offers like way too much. It's actually just a dumb card. Like if they could be forced to have to recycle this like with Labyrinth setup then good because this card like basically resets itself like seven billion times and activates like a billion times so what I mean by that is like we can big welcome effect, return a dude, so it's like return Ariana, so now you have Ariana for next turn, great. And then this will special summon Lovely. So the cost for this doesn't even hurt at all. Th this is helpful, and it's not actually a cost either, but whatever, so Lovely effect. And then that will either pop a card, just any card, uh, monsters or spell traps, whatever. And also, this can just pop a card in your opponent's hand. Sure. So, does that. Okay, so. Then, big welcome. The next turn, assuming they don't just want to set it and activate it again. Now, it has an effect to return one card your opponent controls to the hand. Targeted. So, now, if you have, like, a back row set or anything... Like, they, they can instantly return it to your hand. Like, a monster as well. So, let's say, for example, I end on... I, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Like, let's say Zeus, actually. I can't really Zeus them again. It, it's just not going to happen. So, they have the option of, like, doing normal summon Ariana. And then special summon Lady Lab. Keeping in mind they drew for turn, and they, they can have these just, like, easily. So, normal summon Ariana to add Lady Lab, and then special summon Lady Lab, and then you activate Big Welcome Return Zeus. And then your Zeus is outed. And then they can just set, like, four cards back, like nothing happened. And that's assuming you, like, made Zeus and board wiped them through everything they did to you. They actually have an out to, like, a Zeus. Like, let's assume we made Zeus in Leerlusk or something like that. So we have we went downward Zeus, so we have a format Zeus. And then, boom. 
th this <laughs> returns Zeus the next turn. I don't even get a chance to d do much with it at all. So I guess we can activate Zeus, and then I'll send, what, Lady Lab and Ariana to the graveyard. Does that do a whole lot? No, not really. So that sucks. And if you consider like how many cards your opponent actually needs to do Lovely Lab and stuff, so how many cards are, are not even in the equation here? So if we like say, they obviously normal summoned Ariana here for sure, right? So all they would need to have done this is normal summon Ariana and then add big welcome. That's it. So in theory, if they drew for a turn as well, they have five cards. They have five cards, like, unaccounted for overall. Like, the f four other cards on the first turn, and then the last card, they just drew turn two. Yeah, that that's not dumb. And speaking of which, if they actually had Labyrinth Stovey Torby or Labyrinth Chan Draglier in the graveyard, like, assuming they actually use this to grab Big Welcome instead, then when they removed your Zeus, that actually will trigger Stovey Torby or Chandraglier, and then these guys can just set another big welcome. Alright, and then now you'll get hit by a lovely lab again, and then th this will return. And yeah, Ariana will keep adding Labyrinth cards until they, they run you dry, basically. Keeping in mind that this hasn't even considered uh, the effect of Lovely Lab to reset a normal trap, just generic, any normal trap, and you you can set it on the field again. And of course, technically Lovely Lab can be activated once on their turn as well. So assuming it does get activated, they're also ripping cards out of your hand. So uh, card advantage wise, we're, we're not doing so great unless those cards actually have some lovely triggers in the graveyard. We're uh, looking pretty doomed. And this is just considering lab. We, we haven't actually uh, con started considering like that really heinous traps like uh, Dharma Cannon is actually pretty nasty when they play it. There's also uh, Dogmatic Punishment, Ice Dragon's Prison, and the fact that they can of course reset them and how well those cards trade. So, yeah. Uh, I, I Did I mention Dogmatic Punishment? Yeah, that, that one's pretty annoying as well, so, yeah. So, so your only saving grace here is just, they're not so great going second. And yeah, that, that's about it. So, uh, just because it's not very fun to play against Lab, kind of hoping Lab gets hit. That, that's about it. Not, like, honestly, if we compare, like, between Lab, Pearly, and Kishtira, I think this is the most annoying to play around, because, like, it's a control deck, and e even in this list, by the way, I, I haven't really built for, like, playing against control decks, so now we have to reposition again. So if we reposition again, we, we can be better equipped for control decks. So, change this out like this, and then this like this, and then we don't actually want Nibiru. And then we reposition like this, and let's see how many hands we have with backer removal. I sure hope this can activate, and my opponent controls a monster. Speaking of which, you know, you guys know that Thrust actually asks if you want to set a card. And you just hit yes, instead of asking if you want to add a card. Why? Well, whatever. Here, no backer removal. Here, no backer removal. Backer removal, please. Any backer removal. So we have, keep in mind, two copies of Evenly and one of Duster. And now we have both copies of Evenly. Cool. So it doesn't really hurt Pearly too much to run backer removal. Like, I can just use my um, effect of uh, Delicious Memory or whatever to discard my copies of Evenly Matched. Unfortunately, here I will have to normal summon my Ash Blossom Joe Spring. Which is whatever. Just totally doable though. So, 
The odds of me getting back room removal is like pretty iffy. But if I don't have it, I'm screwed. But if I do have it, sometimes it's useless, and that's just how it is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's all I've got for you guys today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Well, actually, if you have any uh, opinions you'd like to share about, like, maybe what could be limited or uh, what might be good if it were banned but not to completely kill the decks because i do realize some players like some people do enjoy playing um these archetypes so feel free to give me your opinions in the comments below and i will uh respond so uh, yeah i'll see you guys in the next video bye